What's up everybody, do right back at it again with another video. Today we're gonna to be talking about Ground Branch because they just released an Intel report. Yeehaw, number 11, V1033 progress and other news. Let's go ahead and hop into it. It starts out by saying, hey everyone, it's been around a month since our last dev blog and because now we're aiming for monthly entries, the time has come again to showcase some progress and talk about other recent developments. So aside from changing the name of the update, Intel update to Intel report, it goes on to say, new dev team members. As some of you may know from our recent job ads, we have been looking for reinforcements for a couple of areas, VFX, visual effects, and programming being the main one. We hope to have news on a programmer role very soon, but in the meantime, we are proud to introduce Blackfoot Studios new members Charles Schmidt and Zach Reagan. Charles is our first dedicated VFX artist. He was previously a gameplay designer and visual effects artist for Operation Harsh Doorstop. Really? Interesting. And is now giving the particle effects in Ground Branch some much needed love. He will be working working on making hit impacts, muzzle blasts, smoke, blood and all kinds of visual effects in the game look and perform better. Zach's joining us as an additional sound designer whose skill sets nicely complements Mixins with valuable wise and unreal integration experience. Cool. Formerly a member of the Code Blue games, Zach is also a composer, so we might be seeing some new tracks in Ground Branch down the line. I'd definitely love to hear them. Welcome to the team guys. The next thing here is performance optimization. Oh my god. Hopefully they fix it because Ground Branch definitely does have optimization issues. But anyways, as a pre-alpha game on early access that also happens to have a handful of fairly unique features, Ground Branch is bound to have its performance fluctuate over the course of development as we add, remove and generally change things around. And although we keep track of the worst performance offenders, fixes are rarely straightforward and we take some time to figure it out. It's no secret that performance in version 1032 is less than stellar with certain aspects of audio and assets modularity being some of our major culprits, here are some of the steps that we have been taking to address them so far. The M4 MK18 and an HK416D asset optimization. Though beautifully modeled and textured by Bakar Asad, Baker Asad, I'm not sure if that's how you say his name. The M4 and HK416 families of the combines are usually around 12 texture sets per weapon as of version 1032. The models were created with very granular customization in mind, with each individual part having its own texture set. Wow. Interesting. If you go online and your team is using an assortment of different M4 and HK416 based weapons, easily one of the most popular guns in the game, that could be loading upwards up to 30 texture sets for those weapons alone in your GPU's memory. Wow, that's freaking insane to me. Not ideal when you already have in-depth character customization, meaning a whole lot of assets to render. For version 1033, we had those weapon models rebuilt to use only 3-4 to four texture sets each, while preserving as much of the quality and fidelity of the originals as possible. This change may not be as impactful as the more CPU intensive issues such as those caused by dynamic lighting and audio but every bit helps and it had to be done at some point. And they have a picture right here of the more updated HK416 with optimized texture sets. We could look at that. One looks a little lighter than the other but I'm not sure if that's just because of the lighting or what but it looks like a good gun not gonna lie. Actually it does have an extended barrel on the 100 Need, which I'm not sure if that's in game or not, but anyways. Up next we got audio optimization. Zach has been working closely with Mixin to address one of the biggest performance issues in the game, audio complexity causing excessive CPU usage. To better understand the problem, think back on all of the different sounds your character makes in Ground Branch when moving around or firing a weapon. There's the footsteps, the rustling clothes, the crackling gear, and when shooting, there's the mechanical weapon clicks and clings, the muzzle blast, and even a dedicated sound for distant gunfire in in case someone hears them from afar. These sounds are individual audio layers and every time a character moves or shoots, all of these layers are broadcast to everyone. Needless to say, the more characters in the game, the more demanding it becomes. To tackle the problem, the duo has rearranged an entire audio project to support first person perspective versus third person perspective sounds. In practice, this means that they can significantly reduce the amount of simultaneous sounds and layers that are played by determining when to play 
away each of them. For example, the player firing the weapon doesn't need to hear the layer for distance gunfire, so we can now tell the game to only play it as a third person sound, i.e. for other players. Conversely, other players don't need to hear and are unlikely to notice the mechanical weapon layer of your shots, so they will no longer be played for them. As another example, movement sounds can be preserved as layer audio in first person, but for third person playback, we can now play an optimized version where all the layers have been combined into a single sound effect. So you'll still hear a high fidelity multi-layered playback when you move your own character around, but the sound generated by the player will be a simplified version of that. That's far fewer sounds to play. Okay, so that's interesting. This is like another example of when um, like developers cheat to make things better, which, you know, is pretty common. So I kind of expect these developers to do that just to try to fix the optimization. Like if it's not the AI, then it's definitely the optimization, especially when more players get into the game. You notice it. And I kind of wish that that's one thing that they would really fix for anything else, but we'll definitely have to see how that goes. Moving on to the next thing here. This one is first pass results. After this initial optimization pass was done, Mick and Zach ran a profiler on maps run down small town and tanker to see how the cpu usage responded to the changes each map ran three times in single player terrorist hunt with 30 ai bots first in version 1032 and then version 1033 to compare here's what the average peaks okay so run down here cpu usage went down 32 percent small town it went down 20 percent tanker went down 52 percent 52 percent really huh interesting definitely a lot better than the previous one i'll tell you that the peak average for these maps in version 1032 was 48.6 cpu usage which was brought down to a 31.8 peak average in version 1033 or a 34.6 decrease not bad at all for a first pass yeah it's actually significantly better it's worth noting that these numbers are strictly for cpu usage not frame rates and we'll be running more tests as the optimization continues there's more performance to be gained on the audio side of things alone and certainly more scenarios to test on the multiplayer yeah for sure well that was interesting let's move on to the next thing here nvidia geforce now well not directly related to optimization cloud gaming services allow players with low-end pcs to enjoy games that their machines can natively run and with ground branch having an ambitious array of features that can test lower end hardware we have received a lot of interest in geforce now support i mean that would definitely help we have mentioned before that support for geforce now is planned it's been in our roadmap since around February, but we recently discovered that we might be able to support it a lot earlier than expected. Steam has a feature that allows NVIDIA approved games to be linked to GeForce Now as long as Steam Cloud saves are set up and working, which by the way, they are now and enabled by default. You could change that by right clicking the game in your library by selecting properties. And then it has a picture right here. I guess you go to general and Steam Cloud and then click on or off if you want it on or off. Saves will only be required for GeForce Now users apparently. Nvidia has yet to greenlight the integration, but our end is all set up and could potentially lead to GeForce Now support before version 1033 is even here. Fingers crossed. Well, that would be cool. I'm sure people who use GeForce Now really love this information. I don't really use it, I don't think at least. Then again, I haven't really looked into it, but it seems cool. Moving on, animations. As shown in our previous dev vlog, version 1033 will introduce some new weapons, which require not only new sound effects, but also animations. One new weapon is the Russian PMM pistol, which has a fairly unorthodox reload due to the magazine release being located on the top of the grip. Here's a non-retention version. Sorry, no audio on these videos. It's fine by me. I don't even have the audio on in my videos. Let's take a look, see? I mean, it looks good. That's a pretty cool little uh, thing right here. It's only like eight seconds. But anyways, next is the MK17 Scar H, which was using an AR reload in the last updates. Gunshot audio preview video. Notice the charging on the handle on the right side. This was done to reduce the likelihood of clipping with the supporting hand, as well as provide a more unique reload style. All right, let's take a look. Ooh, that looks so cool. I like how the thing just like flings backwards when it's out of ammo. Take a look at that again. Did he like put his hand? Like at this part of the video, he puts his hand like right here. 
It's, you can't really see it. Like, its finger, like, pops up right there to pull that thing back. Cool, cool, cool. Dock and shoot and reload sequences are also being updated. With slight changes, you will be able to load one to two shells at a time, depending on full the magazine is, while keeping it pointed down range and ready to fire. So you can effectively keep your weapon full while still being in the fight. Or take the time to break the weapon down into your workspace to more efficiently load shells into the magazine until full. These two reload types will be done using the two different reload inputs tap versus double tap just like in version 1033 with their speed increased slightly Ooh! so here's the speed urgent which i'm guessing you tap it man without like the blast or any other freaking stuff it just looks so simplistic to me but that was the urgent one let's take a look at this one yeah it's definitely a lot slower one two one two one okay cool nixon has also started working on the basic door handling animations which will begin showcasing next month Ooh, visual effects vfx our new vfx artist charles has also kept busy in the first couple of weeks having put in some work on bullet impact and explosion particles okay cool here's a quick demo of the concrete hit effects that he's put together so far nice to see the angle of shots affects the direction of the impact debris shots will produce impact effects at a similar but opposite angle rather than always fly out of services at a peculiar 90 degree angle okay let's take a look bullet impact concrete Ooh. cool oh and then like oh that that's cool it like bounces basically like the powder comes towards you whichever way you're looking or as the video shows impact will produce larger secondary debris nice apparently it also has a lower shader complexity than the previous ones which could have a positive impact on performance with more intense situations cool charles also has stated prototyping collision logic with the preliminary goal of making explosion particles react appropriately to the surroundings and not go through walls etc here's a quick demo particle collision okay maps storage facility has been receiving a makeover by will since its layout redesigned in version 1032 this art pass adds some welcome character to the facility with the concept of a repurposed soviet era mine and adds a lot more background detail suggestive of its location here are some of the screenshots around 90 percent completion wow this looks gorgeous man you don't it's it's like you're playing a different game like i remember the ground branch that we used to play back when it first came out and my god it has come such a long way just look at how gorgeous these maps are getting this is a view from the dock area showcasing a distant backdrop art pass and the picture underneath it here is of the storage the facility with the large um i forget what you call it uh underground tunnel thing i think that's that right I don't remember. but this looks pretty cool they're adding like stuff where you could go on top of, of like second floors and stuff that's cool that is so cool underneath this it says the open area right in front of the tunnel's main entrance notice the abandoned elevated conveyor built structures oh man this is going to be so fun to plan i can already tell and then i think this is on top of the mountain here which was already overhauled but my god this looks so goddamn good underneath this picture it's this is called the high ground section warehouse which we've actually seen night and day difference but moving on here john has also been working on a new map idea called working title docks that may or may not make its way to version 1032 as well Ooh, new map look at this how gorgeous this is man i wonder where this is supposed to be maybe america i can picture this being like an american dock but i'm not too sure here's a second picture right here noise but moving on to the next thing here new weapon models we showcased the new n1911 a1 in the last dev vlog and you can now see some new angles of that artist bakar's assad's portfolio here take a quick look here got that i i am such a fan of the 1911 i need to get me one. Oh, it's a video here too oh there's freaking oh my god i don't know if it's gonna be that detailed again game but that's fucking nuts i don't want one of those in real life 
I don't know if I'd ever shoot it, but like, I just want to hang it up on my wall or something. But anyways, in the meantime, we have also ordered a new 45 suppressor from Cody to go with it. A Legacy TI Rant, or a Tyrant, I guess, 45S from Advanced Armament Co. Or Corp. AAC. Interesting. But very gorgeous looking, not gonna lie. Other weapons are also getting some love in version 1033, with the AK family and SVD having received remakes by AK Productions. AK Productions? Is that new? I don't remember this guy. But holy shit, look at all these fucking weapons. Oh, this guy's working with SCP Pandemic too? Damn, is it, what game is this for? Oh my god, it fucking hell let loose had this bipod for the bar. That would be amazing. Getting off topic. Here are some previews of the AKS 74U, both factory and Zentinko parts. I'm not sure if that's how you say that. As well as SVD, both wooden and polymer furniture. Oh my god, can we customize that? That would be amazing. The AK 74U looks gorgeous as ever. I love this little gun. It's interesting because they call this a freaking rifle, but it's more like an SMG if I'm being honest. But I mean, you know, it's whatever. Then we got this beautiful. Actually, is this supposed to be the modified? version of the ak-74 you i think it is so you can modify it all the way to look like this wow that's gorgeous basically a before and after nice now we have the svd i'm assuming this is the before and this is the after you can fully customize it that is dope not gonna lie we'll be showcasing the new ak-74m and ak-105 and other assets by ak productions in the future nice 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 as is the case with the upcoming mk-17 scar h these weapons will be added as individual pre built configurations at first though you will be able to swap out parts like sockets and handguards down the line when we set things up to support that level of modularity the m24 is also in the make here's the latest progress shot just before entering the low poly stage oh man this is going to be so fun to shoot man i just want to have both action rifles in this game like give me a mosin too that'd be so fun to shoot the m24 will be fitted with the mirs modular integrated rail system Ooh. and a threaded barrel for the suppressor mounting Oh my god, are you gonna add freaking bipods too? Please, let me know. It needs to be bipods for the freaking M249. I'm blanking on it. But anyways, the AI. We're investigating how to address one of the most frustrating aspects of the enemy AI, their perfect eyesight at night, making stealthy gameplay nearly impossible. Initial prototyping is being done using some logic to read pixels and check them for brightness. That is then hooked up to render the captured component attached to the AI, which will be taking snapshots of all the lighting currently affecting players the idea is that you're caught in one of these snapshots and the brightness reading is determined to be high enough for detection then you get spotted and the ai reacts otherwise it is told to ignore your presence remember that once you give the bots basic abilities like when you see a player shoot it's a subtractive process of telling them not to based on the set of conditions whether it's because they shouldn't be able to see through walls or because they shouldn't be able to see you in pitch darkness Unfortunately, we have nothing playable to show at this time, but should hopefully have some kind of demo in the next Intel report. So about a month from now, I assume, or maybe another month or two. Moving on from that, modding. Oh my God, this is the first time that Ground Branch has really talked about modding as far as I can tell. Modding in version 1033 is a very much work in progress, but there are two main developments we can talk about at this time. Firstly, all current kinds of mods, such as game modes and missions, will now be packaged and uploaded to an online repository. Details to be finalized and this should greatly amplify the delivery of mods to users and propagating updates to mods. Server owners should be able to select mods to be active on servers and these should automatically be distributed to players joining the server. The days of players having to drop CSF, CSV files into their game's installation should be over. Well, to be fair, I've never really modded in Ground Match before, so I'm not even sure what that means. But if you modders out there would like to tell me, then let me know down in the comments below. But anyways, secondly, there are some new kinds of modding, most notably custom patches. Oh my god, I want to put my patch in, please as well as mutators these mutators are a lua scripts like game modes that are intended to extend and or replace gameplay mechanics basic game functionality without requiring a more complicated solution using the sdk which is still on the way the full feature set is yet to be confirmed and is likely to be extended over time but provisionally mutators will allow server owners to customize much structures map changes default allowable player names custom call signs and other server behaviors that may also
also be able to do things like pistol only modifications to any game mode and so on. Much is possible, but not everything will make it into version 1033. We'll share more details of the modding system at an appropriate time, but we know the community is clamoring for more modding possibilities. You know it. And we are doing our best to get this in the game at its earliest appropriate opportunity. This is it for today's Intel. We appreciate you taking the time to read this post and hope to keep a steady stream of previews and progress showcasing going on. Thank you for your continued support and we'll see you next month. So that was a pretty good uh, thing here. Not gonna lie, that was quite a bit. I really like how they're actually showing off a lot of cool stuff here, especially for the modding and new guns and new maps and we I can't wait to see all this cool stuff in the game. That was definitely a fun read, but uh, you know, I'm gonna end it here. If you enjoy the fact that I cover games like Ground Branch, then be sure to like the video, share the video, and comment down below. If you're someone that would like to support the channel, check out my Patreon or hop on that drum button. If you're someone that's new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and ding that bell so that you can get more content on Ground Branch or any other game that I decide to cover. With that all being said, I want to thank everybody for coming out to watch, and I guess I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye.